Did you recently purchase or are you looking to buy a Kubota Grand L series and want to know more about it? Well, today I'm going to do an orientation for you and show you all the features on it. Zach here from Kubota Lynchburg. And today I wanted to go over the Grand L series, which for Kubota is multiple different models, but they're all very similar. So we're gonna do an orientation video to kind of show you the basics on the tractor, how to operate it, a couple of the key features and uh, key things to do or not to do, all your service intervals and everything like that. So with me today, I've got a Grand L 4760 cab model and a Grand L 4760 open station. Now this will be identical to the 5460 or the 6060. The 4060 or the 3560 are a tiny little bit smaller and have different loaders on them, but it's exact same principles and concepts, one versus the other, because it's the same transmission and same style to them. So I like to start at the front of the tractors when I'm doing these videos, um, starting with the loaders on them. So you can see we have a quick attach bucket system. The open station, there is no bucket on it, so nice and easy to see what that looks like without anything on it. But we do have a universal style quick attach bucket. The key thing when you are going to be taking this bucket on and off, as you say, let's use pallet forks or grapples or bale spears, is when you pull this lever here, you can see this pin disconnects from where it's locking into the bucket piece, that rectangular piece. So basically what you've got to do is you have to make sure that that pin goes into the rectangular piece as you push down and lock it in. If it does not go in all the way, um, if it does not latch properly into your hole, that pin going in, um, and you pick up something heavy, you can twist your quick attach. So number one rule when you're using quick attach implements, make sure you lock your levers back, keep an eye on those levers and make sure they're locked in properly because you don't want to damage that. That is an expensive repair. Um, this loader will pick up a little over 22, 2300 pounds. On the 4060 and the 3560, you're probably closer to about 1,800 pounds, uh, but you can still pick up quite a lot of weight with it. If you are picking up weight, make sure that you have counter ballast on the rear um, and as an implement or fluid-filled tires. So usually you want to put an implement or a ballast box on the back of the tractor. Um, the Grandel series does come with a load level indicator, which is nice. So um, if your bottom of your bucket is going to be level to the ground, when you have kind of this indicator right here. You kind of have to come around and take a look at it. So this rod system, when these two tabs line up, and you can see this easily from the cab of the tractor or the open station model, when these two tabs line up, you know the bottom of your bucket is perfectly level with the ground. Now, if it comes out of adjustment, you can easily put the bucket on like a piece of concrete or pavement, loosen this bolt, and you know make it put it back into adjustment. But that's a low level indicator that comes standard on these. So you know for grading work, how to take a look at it. Um, there are, gaps here which i'll throw a little uh tool and go um, system um, advertisement out there i love them um, it's really nice basically you can put a tool and go system to store tools here one goes there another one goes into this bracket on the other side of the tractor nice way to kind of store your tools and your chains and your screwdrivers and your hammers and stuff like that very easy it's an accessory you can add on as we move back you can basically see where your hydraulics are taken care of nothing crazy there the loader controls, we'll go over that in a little bit. So that's your main loader. Pay attention to your quick attach. You've got your lift capacities and your load level indicator. Um, check your tire pressures, check your um, lug nuts and uh, torque right here. I try to recommend that after about 25 hours of use, check all your bolt torque, whether it's your tire bolts and nuts and lug nuts and everything like that, where your loader frame mounts to it, because those don't usually come assembled from the factory that's assembled at the dealership lot. So check basically any bolts you can get your fingers on and make sure that they are tight because they can loosen up after a couple hours of use and bouncing around. We're going to go to the back of the tractor now. So when you're hooking up your rear implements, the Grand L series is amazing because it has two really nice features, which is going to be your telescoping lift arms and your telescoping stabilizers. So your lift arms, if you were to back up to an implement here, and let's say the pin of the implement is sitting right there, and oh, I'm close, I'm two inches away, right? You can just push this lever, pull it out, and all right, where that was now, your pin arm will go in, and you can just click it back into place. So you don't have to worry about backing up the track another inch or two. So that's very nice. Then you have your telescoping stabilizers here, which for your adjustment side to side to take the slack out of it, or just to hook it up, you just pull this pin, once it's on the pin of the implement and you put it in the one hole that it'll lock into, 
because it's not going to lock into all of them. So this one, and then basically it's not going to move as much. So now I'm locked back in and it takes the slack out of that arm. And you got to put your cotter pin back in. You do have your adjustment for your three point hitch for raising and lowering the right hand side. Um, so if you are wanting to raise the arm, you would turn it clockwise, brings it up. If you want to lower your arm counterclockwise, it'll lower it down to level your implement. So let's say, for example, you have a flail mower on the back of your tractor um, and one side is lower than the other. You would basically take the weight off of this arm and you would spin it up or down to raise or lower that side of the implement. So if your right hand is touching the ground and your left hand is six inches off the ground, you just raise it up about three or four inches and it'll level itself back out. Um, you have your standard top link here. This is a category one tractor. Um, even the 60 horsepower is a category one tractor. So your normal cat one implements will work just fine with it. You have a draw bar here. So if you're hauling equipment or hauling this around on a trailer, you can put a D-ring here and run your chain through it or run your strap through it. Um, recommend chains. Um, or if you're hauling like a trailer or a piece of hay equipment or a heavy duty bush hog, that's where you're gonna use your draw bar for. And then you have your PTO underneath this rubber cover right here. Um, this is gonna be your PTO shaft for hooking up your attachments and your implements like your bush hogs, your tillers or anything like that to it. Um, this Grand L series does have these extra hydraulic lift cylinders, so you can pick up a ton of weight for with this three-point hitch. Um, I don't even know the lift capacities on it, but you can pick up a ton of weight with your three-point hitch on it. Got a slow-moving vehicle sign. Hidden behind that is your windshield washer fluid um, because you do have windshield wipers on the front, and you can actually add windshield wipers on the back of this if you have the cab model. Obviously, don't need it on an open station model. Um, so... That's basically your three-point, very nice controls on the telescoping stabilizers and lift arms, really easy access to the three-point. Um, it's a good heavy-duty three-point hitch. So now we get to the fun of the Grandel, the interior. This is where it gets complex, and we'll look at uh, cab versus open station, but this is why the Grandel is extremely popular, is because of how many customizable features you can have in here. So in a minute, I'm gonna grab the camera and show you guys all the different features. Um, but right off the bat, it's a very roomy open station. I'm 5'11". Um, I've got a ton of headroom in here, tons of shoulder room in here, and it is nice and roomy. Um, so that's the joys of this when you come in. And you can adjust it to your own comfort level. So you have an adjustable suspension seat, which is going to be this knob right here. Now, the knob right below it, a lot of people don't know what that is used for. This actually is going to close or open a valve that controls the hydraulics of raising or lowering the three-point hitch. So if I were to close it all the way and I tried to lower my three-point hitch, it would not go down. If I opened it up all the way, then basically that would drop the implement really fast. So realistically, keep it around mid and you never have to touch it again. But just one of those things on it. Um, while we're talking about uh, things down here, we do have a differential lock. That's what this little uh, metal 90-degree angle is. That's going to lock your rear tires when you push down on it. They will spin together to get you out of mud or dirt or snow. So as you're driving, you can lock down. It's going to lock your rear tires to spin together. Four-wheel drive versus two-wheel drive is this lever right here. So when it's connected, the square in the middle is connected. You're in four-wheel drive. And when it's disconnected, you're in two-wheel drive. It's as easy as simply pushing down and pulling back up on it. On the Grand L's, I'm going to go ahead and take the camera now. On the Grand L's, you do have technically a six-speed transmission. So... This knob right here is going to be your high, medium, and low. High, of course, going through the highway is what it stands for, highway speed. Um, fast from one side of the property to the other. Medium is going to be for your uh, mowing work, pulling a bush hog or a finish mower. And low is going to be for heavy-duty loader work, heavy pulling, or running a tiller, something like that in the ground. I always recommend most of the time be in medium range. Unless you know you have to go fast with nothing heavy on the tractor, then you can put it in high range. Um, so, and you can switch between them just pushing back and forth. Now, the reason I call it a six speed transmission is because the best part of the Grand L series is this lever right here. And this, if you look on the side, is going to have a rabbit and a turtle. Um, so, each one of those high, medium, or low ranges has a high and low speed in and of itself. As you're moving, as you're driving, you can just flip this lever up or down, and it's going to instantly change your speed on the go from high to low. Um, and this is huge because a lot of times you want that small adjustment in speed 
um, whether you need to slow down just a little bit to go through some trees or speed up to go through a field. And you don't have to stop the tractor and try to wiggle this into range and everything. You can literally just switch it right there. So that switch is probably my favorite part on the Grand L series. Um, that and probably the telescoping stabilizer or telescoping steering. So you can basically, or it's tilt, not telescoping, um, up and down, very comfortable, very easy, makes it nice when you're in the machine. Now, if we look back behind this, you can see that we have an auto throttle advance button. What that is going to do is that is going to link your hydrostat pedal over here with your engine RPM. So as you push harder on the hydrostat, your RPMs are going to increase. So basically that's auto adjusting your engine RPMs to the speed that you're trying to get out of the tractor. Because normally if you have, let's say your RPM set at 1500, which is really low and you mash that to the floor, you're gonna bog down and almost stall out. You might even stall out, but that would basically increase your RPM so you don't stall as you're going faster. Um, so that's the auto throttle advance. You do have cruise control. If you have a special utility model or basically the bare bones model, and that's not standard, it's a simple $100 button that you can put in and now you'll have cruise control, which is nice. Um, you've got work lights there. Um, one of the other things that you were gonna see on here is a display mode. Um, stick my keys in the ignition real quick good news and bad news is these are universal keys so any key that looks like that will start this tractor I'm not going to start the tractor I'm just going to turn on the electronics so nice deluxe screen the oil engine oil change was changed at one hour it was never changed because it's got one hour on it you can see your fuel your temperature gauges your rpm meters and everything like that to it um, so if I were to hit this display button here you can see that I have stall guard on right now and auto throttle advance. So stall guard basically means you'll never stall the tractor. Um, it will bog itself down, but it'll never stall out even with heavy loads, which is nice. You can see I'm in rabbit, but if I hit that lever, I'm in turtle. So easy to switch between the two. You can see some other things like if you had cruise control on or um, the regeneration system was going through or if your parking brake was activated um, or if your PTO was engaged, all these other buttons to it. Um, if I keep hitting the display button, you'll see it goes from trips to your fuel economy, which is cool. If your PTO is on or off, it'll also tell you what RPMs your PTO is going at if the engine is running. it also tell you basically a hydrostat mode too. So you can adjust your hydrostatic modes. If you want to really customize this to yourself on how you like to operate it, you can actually do a lot of uh, customization in this screen as far as changing what your RPMs are going to be at, how responsive it is. Um, let's see, that's preventive maintenance for service. Trying to see if this has anything about responsive. I think I'd have to go through in this system again and change the responsiveness. So if you want it to be very responsive, real quick adjustment, if you're doing a lot of like bush hog work, you can change that so it speeds up or goes down slower with this pedal. Or if you're doing a lot of loader work or work in the trees, you can change that responsiveness. So a lot of adjustments in there. Read your owner's manual, tell you how to do it. Of course, you've got spot for a radio and air condition and heat. And on this side, you have your very nice ergonomic loader controls right here. And there is a button on the front of this that I can push, and that's a throttle button. So if I push this button, it's going to throttle up to max RPMs. So if you're doing heavy loader work and you don't want to have to reach forward and or reach here and throttle up because you want your engine to be running the same speed, um, you know, as you're moving and you want to keep that constant speed, you can just hit this button and it'll throttle up. This will raise and lower your three point hitch. This is your PTO engagement. So to turn on your bush hog or your tiller or your auger, whatever it is, turn on your bush hog off and on. You've got work lights. And if you were to install more work lights, there's another place for another switch on it. You've got a handy dandy cup holder and a little bit of a tool holder and everything like that over here. Um, so that's the majority of your controls. You also have a loader lever lock that almost nobody uses, but you can use if you wanted to lock your loader on it. Um, I think that's the majority of your controls, headlights and everything like that to it. So we're going to go take a quick look at the open station, even though almost everything's identical. We're going to take a quick look at what it looks like because it's going to have the same Hydrostat Plus transmission, the same controls and features, just in an open station model. There's a couple small things I like to point out that I love about the Grand L open station. One is how open the floor plan is. So it is so easy for me to get up here. I could stand and talk up here. There's so much room up here. It's very easy. Also, you have these little plastic guards. Keeps the wind off your feet if it's cold. 
um, or it keeps the mud and the dirt and the rain and everything off your feet. So as you're using the pedals, you actually have these plastic guards, which doesn't sound like much, but honestly, it is kind of nice to keep stuff off your feet as you're using it on an open station model. Just one of those cool little features that it has. Still has the great tilt steering column, still has the high and low range and all the exact same control layouts other than your radio and AC and everything like that to it. So the open station model is very similar as far as um, operating it, as far as customizability and everything like that. Last thing I'm gonna do is go over the service intervals and what to service and maintain on it. Um, the most important thing about a tractor is keeping it well greased. So anywhere there is a pivot point with a pivot pin, there is going to be a grease fitting. Um, so there are a ton of grease fittings on here, read your owner's manuals, but anywhere on the loader there's grease fittings. Um, on the articulation of the tractor there's grease fittings, on the three-point hitch there's grease fittings. So keep it well greased. Every 10 to 15 hours, keep it well greased. Any good old red lithium grease or molly grease or anything like that will work, there's no special grease for it. Um, if you were to open the hood, there's a little pin you pull here and pull this guard forward. So, you know, basically this pin pulls out, leans forward, and then there's a ring here you pull and that unlocks your hood and a little bit of pressure and it'll pick itself up, which is nice. If you were to raise the loader all the way up, you have a little bit easier access, but your main service points in here, um, and you can see we haven't done the pre-delivery inspection on this one yet. It's low on coolant, so you do need to keep the coolant at the full level. It's easy access to your battery for jumping it. There's some extra fuses and everything down there as well. One of the important things, if you ever start overheating, is you have your radiator screen here. So you can pull this out and brush it off, clean it off. If you're over overheating, this is the first thing to check on there. Um, you'll have your air filter back here, giant air filter. Keep that clean, blow it out with uh, an air nozzle or something like that. You only have to change it every two to 400 hours. It's not often you're gonna be changing that. Down low on this side, you can see there's more grease fittings and more grease fittings here where everything pivots. Um, you're gonna have your oil filter there. So when you do your first change, um, I'll talk about that real quick, at 50 hours, you're gonna do your break-in service. Um, and that's going to basically be a 50 hour break-in which changes your oil filter and your engine oil, as well as your hydraulic and transmission filters. So at 50 hours, oil filter, engine oil, and both the hydraulic filters, and of course, grease well before then. And your hydraulic filters are tucked up, you might be able to see it right behind the fuel tank. So you can, might be able to see it back in there. Yeah, there you can see it, the canister of the, oil, or the hydraulic oil filter. So you wanna change those at 50 hours as well to get all the break-in debris out of your system. So check your bolt torque. Please check that because the things will loosen up. Grease everything, oil, hydraulic filters and engine oil itself, not the hydraulic fluid at 50 hours. After that, it's every 200 hours that you can do your hydraulic systems. Um, oil, I recommend every 100, 150 hours you change your engine oil on it. On the cab models, you do want to clean out your cabin air filters because you have a internal and external circulation just like your car does. You can push that button to change it between drawing in air or using the internal air. Check those cabin air filters every once in a while as well. Keep them clean and you'll stay a lot cooler in the summertime. So that's your overall orientation on the Grand L series. Uh, tried to hit as much as possible, but if you have questions, of course, leave me a comment and let me know.